Hey guys, I want to share a little bit tonight about the voice of the Lord and how we're his voice on the earth. We're his choice to be his voice. But um, let's go to a couple scriptures, um, many of them. Just do a word search. Bible Gateway is an awesome tool, by the way, um, if you don't have it. Um, but voice, just study the voice. But Psalms 29.3, I think it's 29.3, um, Revelation 4, 3, um, Revelation alone has 38 scriptures about the voice, you know, um, Psalms 29, that was where I want to start with, um, I'm going to kind of semi-quote it, but the voice of the Lord is over many waters, thunders, and it says lightning and thunders, and then John, um, John, when he's heard the voices of the elders uh, in the revelations, uh, when he heard the voices of the martyrs, the 144,000, uh, just, but 29 talks about the voice of the Lord is as thunder and lightning over many waters. And about a year ago, it would have been last October, so yeah, a little over a year ago. Um, we were about to go to a trip in Pennsylvania, a missionary trip in Pennsylvania. He gave me some little random podunk town to go to. Um, long story. We did, but before we were going to go, I was just look, I was looking for, actually looking for another scripture, but then all of a sudden there was Psalms 29. And he spoke to me and he said that we're his voice. I was like, that's pretty cool, God, but that was your voice. You know, that's, I mean, your voice was the thunder, your voice was the lightning. But then he showed me the ones in Revelation and all throughout it, and it was all part of this book. That's how I'm his voice, is the books that the Lord's having me write. I'm writing a bunch more right now. I've already got two out. Um, just email me at Jesus is Alive in America at gmail.com. Uh, Type in Jesus is Alive in America in Google. You can get to us. There's many ways you can find it. But we're also on, it's also on Amazon. But it's called Jesus, Christ in You, the Hope of Glory. And he told me, he said, and we're his glory and his story. We all have a story and his feet to go where he tells us to go. So then recently, he just keeps adding things to it. That's just how the Lord deals with me. Um, I'll get dreams, visions, scriptures, um, early morning prayer, just different things and ways he's just highlighting things and bringing things together. But usually it's over a period of time. So that was a year ago. Then go to Habakkuk 2. That goes more along with me, part of the voice that I am. And that's in the written form in the books. Um, but it says Habakkuk 2, find the vision, write it down, and put it on tablets. So I've got a tablet now, that's what I'm doing. It's just, it's important, guys. But there's a, there's a storm coming, guys, a spiritual storm. It's going to be an awakening, a choosing time. Kind of where the rubber meets the road, guys. To just get right down to the brass tacks of it, if you want. And it's coming to America first. It's coming to the world, too, but it's going to start in America. And I've had three dreams about it and multiple early morning prayers and scriptures added to it and just all this stuff and I wanted to put it out there and the Lord keeps highlighting December 1st so it's like okay so I'm just going to go with the obedience piece um, and just be obedient but uh, you know 1st Peter 2 20 and 21 you know there's no secret revelation I'm not trying to hide or just I got something that you don't, na 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 boo boo. None of that. I'm just 
just being obedient, guys, because he's still adding to it. But just recently he added this to it about the voice, how we're going to, they're going to, a stranger they will not follow. They're going to, the lost are going to hear his voice and they're going to be in utter darkness. And we're not going to see them because it's going to be so dark and they're not going to see us because it's going to be so dark. So I'm like, okay, God, I'm listening. Kind of, you know, seeing how all this fits together, and I don't have it all yet. Maybe you have some stuff that you want to add to it. Send it to me. We'll talk about it. Whatever. Um, got my email address. So, or comment. Put a comment on here. But so, he took me to some natural occurrences. And it was 9/11, and there was three different people. One guy was a Marine, a retired Marine. I think his name was John, but I'm not sure, but true story. But the Lord told him to go to the towers that had just collapsed and to look for people. So that's what he did. And they let him in because he still had his Marine credentials. Um, they probably needed all the volunteers they could get. Well, he was out by himself. There was all the rescue workers who were in different parts. I mean, it was a massive you know you can just imagine you've seen the news too but it's just a little overwhelming well he was walking along the road by himself crying out united states marine corps john this is john or uh, if his name wasn't john sorry um but and he kept calling out he rescued some people they heard his voice deep in the rubble they had to get cranes over there, rescue workers. They had to dig them out. They were buried way down, but they heard his voice. I believe he had a flashlight too, but they couldn't see the light, but they heard his voice. He couldn't see them. They couldn't see him, but they heard his voice, and he heard theirs. Then there was another guy. The Pentagon just blew up. plane just crashed. I think he was in the Navy. Um, not sure. He was in one of the services. Ran in the building, grabbed a flashlight, ran in the building, looking for people. So it was so dark in there, he couldn't see, smoke filled, couldn't hardly breathe, no lights, just black. He started crying out, hollering for people. People started hearing him coming to the light and his voice. And he rescued them. Started rescuing them. Then there was another guy who was an older uh, worker in one of the towers, older white guy, some business executive, and another business executive, a black guy. So really that might help some of the racial disparities that are going across supposedly this land. Um, he decided to stay. The white guy decided, said, I'm going to stay and try to find people. Started calling out. Same thing, smoke, couldn't see, dark. The black executive guy was on the other side of a wall, but he heard his voice. So they started calling out, they started calling out to each other. They had to literally tear down a sheetrock wall or parts of a sheetrock wall, make a hole in it with their bare hands to get out. And they got out just as the tower collapsed. Point is, they, none of them could see each other hear each other's voice and that's what we're going to be in this storm guys his voice his light so it's time to rise and shine Isaiah 60 for the glory of the Lord is upon you so there's so many scriptures in there guys and that's what this book is Jesus Christ in you the hope of glory it's about being his voice it's full of scriptures I had one guy that read it and he's like man it's mostly scriptures I'm like you know well that, that's how the Lord had me put together I'm not really an author guys I'm, it's just I'm a directional vessel and that's what he told me to do so it's on Amazon it's on Kindle I got an email version of it. If you send me your email, I'll just email you a copy of it. I'm trying to create some links and all this stuff is real, real foreign to me, guys. All this computer technology stuff is, I mean, I'm not, not really the sharpest crayon in the box here, guys, on this one, on this computer stuff. It's like over the top of my head. So 
anybody wants to help your local here in Dallas or come to Dallas, I really need some technical help. Got so many things that the Lord's putting together. I'm doing Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, a website, I'm trying to create a blog on there. The Lord told me to do all this. I'm like, do you know who you're talking to? But he wants me to be his voice. So I'm going to be obedient and I'm just going to do it. Real challenging, difficult. Um, it's a lot to it time-consuming, all that above stuff. But anyhow, we love you guys. We're his voice, his choice to be his voice. Um, just get copies of the book. If you don't like it, just email me and I'll refund your money. You can keep the book or whatever. I'll send you shipping, give your money back. It's just got two of them out there on Amazon. Um, just email me, Steve Youngstrom, or no, I'm sorry. Jesus is alive in America at gmail.com or you can go to Jesus is alive in America.com or you can just type in Google Jesus is alive in America will come up on YouTube Facebook and all the other stuff comment send us things I'm trying to start this blog page I want to hear your story guys I've got Facebook blew up on me I've got almost a thousand friends all over the world i'm trying to put together our different stories screen them a little bit of course because i don't want a bunch of you know hokey stuff and i'm not trying to be the jesus police either i just want to be led by the spirit but i want to get it out there guys because it's time for us to be his voice it's time for us as a body to just you know, if you're the voice, be the voice. If you're the ears, be the ears. If you're the knees, be the knees. If you're the hands, be the hands. If you're the feet, be the feet. Nothing but one body. So we love you guys. Um, talk to you soon. Um, just remember, you're his voice. His choice to be a vo uh, his voice in this dark, dark world and time we live in. I don't even have to be a rocket scientist to figure that one out. It's pretty dark, guys. Look around. But we're not dark. We're the light of the world. His voice. See y'all. Talk to you soon. Bless y'all.